but talking about whether someone stays or whether someone goes or whether Lakers is going into the next game or in the game 7 let's talk about Lakers versus Memphis Grizzlies I mean a disappointing game for Lakers being the Lakers fans that we are me and Angad yes, I mean, it was me. very hard I'm, to watch that I'm game. gonna let you two guys handle this one because <laughs> uh, you guys are really really sad eh? I mean I don't know what to say this has gone straight to my heart I cannot I cannot uh, talk about <laughs> this for long so we'll have to cut it short let's move on to the next I'm just kidding guys let's talk about <laughs> Memphis this versus Lakers uh a disappointing game think, for LeBron James. Yeah. A disappointing game for uh, Lakers as a whole. I think so. LeBron James was uh, pre- felt it in the first half. I mean, the guy has the best IQ that you've ever seen in a player, greatest IQ player on the on the court in the NBA right now. But I think so. He thought that he might have not might not have the best game of the night or might not have the best days. That's why he pulled back. And I think so. He was sparing his energy for game. Uh, game 6 so that he could come back but I think so LeBron has to take a lot of weight on this one because it was a disappointing overall what do you guys uh, performance overall what do you guys think I think I have a spicy take wherein I think not just this one not just this game or this series or this year I think LeBron is that leader of the that the leader of that team for sure and I for think, sure I think LeBron needs to have a good game for the Lakers to win. I think AD cannot lead them to a win, even if he has a good game. Just because of the way that he maybe scores those points or maybe is uh, just directing his team, just managing his team, just uplifting his teammates, just getting easy buckets for his teammates. I think LeBron has a way more impact in his in his 20 points or a 30 point or, a, or 10 rebounds than, than Anthony Davis might. I mean, Davis has his games, but he's very streaky as well. Even though he had a good game, and the Lakers overall did not play all that well, and it was showing right from the top down of the talent, like both uh, AD and and LeBron's points looked very meaningless. It wasn't uh, very uh, momentum shifting. Uh, and the Grizzlies always looked in control, and they just pulled away in late in that third and just fourth. Uh, and the Lakers at at that point really looked deflated. But uh, to your point on resting players, after that monster like OT game, do you think uh, Darwin Ham should have pulled the plug earlier and rested LeBron and AD, in maybe like even in the starting of the fourth, wherein the Grizzlies really pulled away and the Lakers just looked deflated at that point. But he, I, agree I think that. he took out LeBron at, at like the two minute mark. Uh, which was, I think, rough. I mean, there should have been a better conversation between LeBron and the coach at that point of time because LeBron was clearly not feeling himself in the game. And then he playing the fourth quarter, I think, so he should have been rested on the fourth quarter. AD would have been pushed because he was uh, he was looking a, a bit better than what LeBron was looking. He probably could have gotten those points for his self-confidence, but LeBron playing in the fourth quarter it was re- really bad, was detrimental to his self-confidence. Although it, one game does not affect him as much, but... Uh, that not feeling it, I mean, he was not feeling it from the starting of the game. He's also like the leader on the court. Everyone on that team is looking up to LeBron. If LeBron is scoring well, everyone feels in groove. If feels in sync with LeBron. If LeBron is not feeling well, no one else looks in sync. And everyone is in sync with LeBron. No one is feeling that well on the court as well. Right. And AD not, is not that dominant player. Rudraj, to be very honest, he's not dominated. Uh, he's He's... I mean, every game you do not know which AD you'll get for the game. Oh yeah, right. That that's a problem with him, and he is not a player that is very consistently dominating the the paint. He was not dominating the paint this game as well, as much as he should have. He caught the points, but I think so that dominance was required a lot more from his side. And I agree to the fact that they they should have rested LeBron because considering his his age, he's running front center back. He's getting those <laughs> fast breakaway points. He's getting those dunks. With his age, I, I think so. He should have been rested for Game Six when uh, Lakers would have come in clutch and won it. And Just I'm quickly expecting coming that back as well. to the Grizzlies, though, uh, I think the Grizzlies changed up their game plan a little bit. Uh, Bane has been used a lot more inside the three-point line rather than uh, just outside the arc, and he's been playing amazing. Those he he was finishing left-hand layups, falling like over two defenders. He's been making tough layups. He's been making middies. And the Memphis backcourt <laughs> truly looked 
unstoppable. They had more than 60 points uh, by the start of the fourth quarter. And in that fourth quarter, Memphis went on a 23-2 to run. And the Lakers just did not have an answer. They had just tough shots, uh, tough threes. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I think I saw a stat, you know, that with AD in the lineup, even though AD did not play well last uh, in the game in game five uh, in game four, right? With AD on the court in the one ninety minutes they played, Lakers have been plus thirty eight, and in the fifty five minutes, that's all that he sat out. They're minus thirty three. So I mean, AD, you, you know, more than AD being an attacking presence, I think AD has has to be the defensive anchor. He's been really nice. Well, even in the offensive games, he's been really well. But this is overall a very disappointing game for me. I think I saw. I think Lakers were really in for not sweeping this, uh, letting this game end in five, the series end in five. They were really <laughs> ready for. Uh, God bless you, Shrinan. But they were really ready for a game six uh, matchup. But at the same point of time, I think the problem has been that, you know, if you are not going to try at all, then probably rest the starters. Like, I was looking exactly. at the game with AD played 40 minutes. It did not make sense for AD playing 40 minutes. It doesn't matter if you're losing or it's a blowout, right? I'm pretty sure the Lakers have a veteran enough squad where a blowout is not going to affect them for the next matchup. Especially LeBron James, who's, you know, been part of exactly. these things. He was someone who was part of the 3-1 team, right, in Cavs, 2016 Cavs, right? And you know how how tough a guy uh, LeBron James for sure Why is. the fly-by, man? <laughs> That's pain. <laughs> but I would say, you know, um, I think Darwin have really screwed this up. Well, you know, AD could have been injured again. He got hit on the tailbone. He dropped and Every time you drop, it's like day-to-day Davis, right? It's like straight <laughs> close Davis. He's gone. And there's no there's no time for more Bamba. No Bamba provides two things that AD, uh, that uh, that the Lakers really want, and that's pain production and that's spreading the floor, right? Mo Bamba could provide both things, and we don't know at this point can Mo Bamba do that because I've never seen him officially play with the Lakers jersey, right? Five second round picks does not mean a lot, but I mean he can get eight minutes off the bench. That's all, right? And sometimes when you are um, trying to fill a, gla- a gap, when you're trying to you know, uh, not let that run be a 23-2 run. You need someone off the bench who can, you know, really die for a loose ball or like go into Ja and probably slap him, slap the ball out of his hand or something or the other, right? You need that sometimes in your team. That's why the Memphis have Dylan Brooks, right? Dylan Brooks have not been good for a couple of years, but Dylan Brooks, you need someone to, you know, punch someone when they get in Ja Moran's face. You need someone to very technical. You need you need a Ray one <laughs> game when someone's being too physical with Steph Curry, right? You know, uh, Nazir Muhammad probably is going to get a statue built of him because he pushed LeBron back in 2011 in that D-Rose MVP season. Right? Nazir Muhammad probably got like seven minutes on time in the playoff. <laughs> but he's still... Yeah, I mean, he's... like, even Udonis Haslam getting texts off the bench right now yeah. for Miami. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 you just sometimes need that enforcer where he's just going to go... Uh, be in everyone's head, try and punch someone in the nuts and like get away with it and all <laughs> that, right? And Mo, I mean, I'm not saying Mobamba needs to be that guy, right? But Mobamba, um, we don't can... condone punching guys in the yeah, nuts, by the way. Right? We do not condone any punching in the nuts. It's been awful, especially in this playoff series. <laughs> I I have been an NBA fan for a lot of uh, like seven, eight years now, properly, but. At this point in time, I've never seen so many groin punches in my life. Exactly. This is like a the... weird year for that. It's been for like, like almost think... every series is having yes. this. And I don't understand why. Thing. Should they should they introduce L guards in NBA as well? I mean, no, <laughs> that, that's I mean your athleticism for sure. Today, like Trey Young was inbounding that ball and he had Marcus Smart in the groin for like three different times and they still couldn't inbound that ball. No, no, man. I, I, I don't want to get into Marcus Smart because I know that that guy is really okay. changing for the match sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, you know, Luke, I want to talk about Luke Kennard. So, Luke Kennard obviously got injured for game six. He was a plus 26 today, which is the highest in the Memphis Grizzlies lineup. And just to give a and, little reference. And, yeah, just to, he's sorry. been their best shooter. Yeah, for like, sure. He's been the best shooter. But just for reference, right? Dylan Brooks, I'm going to talk about that guy for sure. Dylan Brooks was 3 for 15 from field. And he was a minus 11. And he was the only person with a negative plus minus in the entire Memphis Grizzlies lineup <laughs> who actually played minutes. 
I think the entire lineup because the players who didn't play minutes I obviously got a zero. Right. So it doesn't make sense. I, I think I think uh Tyler Jenkins would really have had something for game six with having Luke Kennard play more because Desmond Way uh, Desmond Wayne is not a, a defensive liability. Uh, of course if he's going against LeBron or AD, anyone on almost anyone is a defensive liability. But Desmond Wayne has shown that he can obviously keep uh, pace with himself, especially at the shooting guard position. I think John Murray is obviously uh, sorry, John Rani. Uh, Triple J has been obviously a defensive player of the year candidate. Um, who's the center man? I keep on forgetting. Um, Sandy Adama, Xavier Tillman. Xavier Tillman, Sandy Adama, they're both non-negatives at this point. And John Murray, I I mean, then they don't need a lot of guarding at their position. So I think they could have I gotten think Xavier away Tillman play. might be a bad matchup for LeBron even like. The way he guarded them, uh, him in that uh, game four, game four, he was he was doing a tremendous job just keeping him from the paint as much as he could, and then JJJ yeah, exactly, coming at exactly. And I think LeBron, we've seen LeBron has had problems with people with good wingspans, people who can keep up with him on the perimeter because he's you know used to just blowing by his defender for like 19 seasons. This is the 20th season, probably the first time. Like from ninety percent of blowing by, he's like down to like seventy percent. That he can't blow by those thirty percent anymore. But at the same point in time, I think Lakers. I was not expecting a Lakers win tonight, and I was expecting like LeBron to play like twenty five minutes, like Jimmy Butler played in game two. Right, play twenty five minutes, get enough that you know you are obviously you go get into the heat of the game, but you're not really taking it too hard. Right, you're not really. Switching up, you're not really trying to get a 30 point triple double or anything, but just get enough uh, minutes so that you're uh, you're not tired for game six. But at the same point, then you're uh, rejuvenated and you're playing game six at home against uh, Grizzlies and get away. Because if you're talking about someone that you know, like uh, you know, someone who uh, we're going to go ahead with this again later on, but. If you want the series to get over, that possible matchup could end in a six-game series, right? Warriors could take it away and then Warriors get another extra day to uh, chill out and probably relax enough with Lakers playing another game seven, right? And I don't I don't think anyone wants Lakers to go for a seven-game series. But Sajan, do you think that this series is over in six games or uh, <laughs> Dower and could possibly hit the greedy once again and get them away with it? Uh-huh. I mean, they'll have to finish it in six series. They don't want to get into game seven with uh, Jean Moran playing the way that he is. I mean, that that guy could pull an, a last game finisher here. I mean, he could finish the game off for Memphis Grizzlies and that would be very, very, very uh, challenging for the Lakers if, they, if it goes into game seven. But I think so. Uh, if LeBron feels well. Also, talking, just want to quickly touch upon the point that what's happened to LeBron's three-point shooting? He's been shooting 16% three points the... In the postseason, I mean that is, that has worst been surprising season, for worst, me. Worst I think it might have something LeBron. to do with his legs, uh, because he's been working hard, and I think Father Time catches up to everyone. Like they say, Father Time is undefeated. I think it's not LeBron's athleticism that has suffered. We all know that he can still get up to that rim. He can still challenge shots, but I think it's his endurance and his and his stamina, which I think is affecting his legs, and which in turn is affecting his shots. He's he's struggling a lot. I think because he's relying a lot more on those shots anyways because he hates to drive now because it's it's very tiring for him. He plays big minutes. He's having to do a lot on the defense as well. So I think that might be affecting his shot as well. And uh, he's been prone to make uh, some bad calls in those long threes, which he's not an expert at, I'd say. I, I, I would want LeBron in the post more than I would want him shooting from like curry range that's not his expertise I mean I think so he's got the players around him and he's not getting that open looks that he used to before because he was relied upon for his three-point shooting before all the guys that came into the play into the team after the mid-season dra- uh, mid-season transfers so I think so he's taking a lot more contested threes in my opinion and I think so that is bringing down his percentage because if there is an open look the other guys are there who can take up take the open look better and probably score uh, in those uh, positions. Hey, right, right before you transition into a new game, into the next game, I have something to say, and this is original by Andre the Roda. Ja can hit a 3D, Bane can hit a midi, Brooks can be with any, Lakers and Sticks. <laughs>